So today, we have some time and I want to teach you some Buddhism, okay? Now, the Buddha once said, there are two types of people that are hard to find. These two types of people are like rare gems. You know how you dig in the dirt and you find like a diamond? It's very hard to find. Or you find gold underground, it's very hard to find. These two types of people are super hard to find. Do you know what kind of people they are? Who has an idea? Do you have an idea, Abby? What are the two people who are the hardest to find in the world? Do you know? P Dream, do you remember? Achitta, do you remember the two type of people who are... I remember the story, but I don't remember the two people. Matthew, do you remember? I remember the story. Yeah. There was a story? Yeah. The, what was the story that goes with this? No, I just remembered you talking yeah. about this. Okay. So, in Pali, it's called Bupakari. Can you say that? This is the Bali, right? Bupakari. And the other part is called the people who have, it's a skill called Katanyu Katawetita. It's a long one. Can you say it? Katanyu Katawetita. So now let me explain what it means. The people who are Bupakari are the people who are very rare. These people are hard to find. There's not a lot of them in the world is the people that gives a favor first, freely, with no expectations. So that means people who help other people for free, just out of kindness, are very hard to find. So when you find someone like that, someone who just helps you, they see you in need and they just help you, those people are very rare because most of the people in this world are selfish. Most of the people in this world don't care about other people. But when you find those special people who do care, they are special. But there's a second group who's also very special, very hard to find. And they are people who are called, they have the, the, the skill of called katanyu. Do you know what that means? Achita, what do you think it means? Accepting favors? Everyone accepts favors. A favor is when someone does something nice for you. If you accept it, you just accept it. That's not special. What is the special part? Abby. They did it for you and you didn't do anything for them? Well, that is not special because that's normal. People help you and then you just move on, right? But what is the special person? Special means that it's hard to find people like this. Aaron, you have any idea? What does katanyu mean? Have you heard this word before? It's a very big concept in Buddhism. What does katanyu mean? Usually it's said when you say like, do you have katanyu to your parents? You have katanyu to your teachers? Do you know what that means? Not just respect. Sometimes you will do things to show your katanyu. Do you know what it is? It's kind of like honor. Have you ever seen like Japanese cust uh, culture before? Like in movies or anime, have you seen it? What do they do? What do the, what do the students do for the teachers? <laughs> Other than just bowing, not just bowing, what do they do? They clean, they cook for their teachers, they, they buy gifts for their parents, they wash their clothes for their parents, they drive their parents, they do the farming for their parents, right? They do everything they can for their parents. Do you know why they do that other than just respect? It's called, they understand that their parents are bupakari, which means their parents have given them favors and now it's our turn to return the favor. So the two people that are very hard to find in this world are one, people who give favors, people who help other people first. You know, you don't have to wait for you to help me first. No, I'm just gonna help you. Whatever you need, I'm just gonna help you. This is something that my mom used to teach me all the time. Is when someone needs help, help them. If you can and it doesn't hurt you too much, help them. And one thing my mom always taught me, which I learned and it actually turns out really well sometimes, is that when someone asks for $10, if you can, give them 20. You know, my mom almost never gave people what they asked which is very interesting to me. I never understood this because if someone asks you for help, can, you, can I have, not just homeless, I mean like, like regular people too. They ask, hey, I need help, I need to 
pay something that costs a thousand dollars. My mom will send them a check, but she'll send them a check for five thousand or three thousand. And I always wonder why, mom. They only ask for one thousand. My mom says, "Do you know how hard it is for someone to ask for help? When someone's struggling so hard, and they ask you for help, that means that's the minimum that they need. So if you can and you have it, help them." And I asked her before, "Mom, but these people—they're not going to help you back. Like you're not going to get anything from this." And mom would say, "I already got it. When I help them, I feel good about myself." I feel like I'm a good person. So even if they never pay the money back, and usually they don't, I'm happy that I got to help a fellow human in need. There's been times where there's been people who we don't even know them, but they call my mom because she's like skilled in many things, and they say, "Hey, this guy is dying. He's alone at the hospital. He's scared. Can you come visit him?" And my mom doesn't even know the guy. She went to the hospital to go stay with someone who was dying because they were alone. These are the kind of things that are called giving out favors for free. Now, my mom also showed me that she had the skill called bupakari, katanyu katawetita. I'm sorry, katanyu katawetita. Because you know why? My my aunt Meim, she's a nun too. I don't know if you met her before a dream. Meim, the one who does all the crocheting, long time ago. You probably really young back then. She's my mom's one of my mom's older sisters, and when my mom was younger, her family used to be super rich, and then there was a big fire and they became super poor, and so my mom's seven brothers and sisters they all had to work and sell like you know what bala is, it's like pickled fish. It's like smells horrible. You like put some fish in a bucket and you like ferment it and it's but it's very cheap and you sell it at the market for just a couple dollars. And our whole family had to sell that just to survive. So every night, the seven brothers and sisters, other than my mom and the grandmother, would sleep in like one big room. They said their feet were touching each other's heads, and they were like, you know what I mean, like a really cramped room. And they would sleep. And sometimes at night they would cry, and say, "Oh, our life is so hard. We're so poor. Life is so difficult." But my mom's older sister. And the family, they made it so that my mom never worked. So when the whole family sold the pala, my mom never did. They sent the youngest daughter to school. Everyone worked hard, took their money, and paid for my mom's school. When my mom needed a bicycle, she was the only one in the family who had a bicycle. When my mom wanted a dress, Ma'im would actually go buy the cloth and make her a dress, and she's the only one in the family who had a dress. Everyone has to wear hand-me-downs the whole time, and so all these people—my grandmother, my mom's brothers and sisters—they all sacrificed their life so that my mom had an opportunity to go to high school, to go to college, and then go to the United States and create a life. And when my mom came here, she worked really hard because she never forgot the sacrifice of her family. They were the bupakari. They were the people that helped her first. She never asked for help, but they helped her. For free, because they loved her and they cared about her. So when my mom started making money, started making some money, making some money, you know what she always did? She always sent the money home because she remembered the debt that she owes to the parents, to her brothers and sisters. She always sent it home. Whenever you know family members wants to visit America, come stay with me. And you know what they would do? This is something I noticed, Dream. That's like a secret, but like. Let's say, for example, their family would send their their kids over here, right? And they'll be like, "Here's five thousand dollars for Aaron. This use this for Aaron's rent, for his food, all the costs for Aaron. Please use this five thousand dollars." So Mayo will take the five thousand dollars and put it in the safe. And every day, Aaron would eat. Aaron would buy clothes and everything. And Mayo will be like, "Oh yeah, here's your money. Here's your money." And Aaron would spend money buying food, spend money for school. And at the end, when it's time for Aaron to go home. Maya would take the five thousand dollars that she never touched, and give it back to Aaron, and say, "Go give it to your mom." The money that she spent was her own money, because for her, she was paying back Aaron's parents. And this is the kind of people that is hard to find in the world. People in the world nowadays are so selfish; they just want, 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 and they never think about returning. They never think about giving back, and that's why the Buddha said. These two types of people are super rare, so here's the trick. 
Achita, pay attention, okay? This is the super trick. If you find someone who gives out favors, be very nice to them. Be very kind to them because they're magical people. They're special. They're hard to find. If you find some people that return favors, try to be their friends because these people are hard to find. But on the other side, you know what else we should do? We should learn to be those people because those people are so special. We should learn to be that too. If someone needs help, if you can help someone, help them. But you have to make sure it doesn't hurt you too though, okay? You have to help them, but only if it doesn't hurt you. Then if people help you, never forget a favor given. Like, you know, in the old movies with the sword fighting and the dragons, those people always live based on honor. You helped me, I'll never forget. You ever see those anime stories where sometimes like you save someone's life? Like, let's say Achita saves Dream, or Dream's life. And Dream will say, you know what? You saved my life. My life is yours. I, from now on, I will serve you. From now on, I will always be your friend. From now on, I will return your favor. And it's that kind of feeling of like, you helped me, I won't forget you. So, do you remember the words? Bupakari. Can you say it with me? Bupakari. Those are the people that give the favor first. Katanyu katawetita. People who reflect on a favor and give a favor back. Repay the favor. Okay? This will be the Dhamma topic for today. So I want you to remember this one, okay? Satu. Satu. Okay.